all NBA stuff. We're just doing a check-in. Final votes due, I think, a couple days after uh, Game 82, which is next Sunday. So here's where I'm landing on on the uh, Jokic and Bede thing. I'm just going to plant my flag in this now. I don't know. You have a vote this year. I don't know if people are lobbying you. I'm not bending the rules. I'm not putting Jokic and Embiid on the first team. I went through all the All-NBA teams. At no point in history did anyone do this. I think it's bullshit for us to tweak the rules. Jokic is a center. I know he plays point guard on offense, but he's not a guard. Putting him at forward is ridiculous to me. Until they actually change the requirements, to me, it's like you have to pitch you have to pick Jokic or Embiid for first team All NBA center, and the other one goes to second team, and that's just the way it goes. And if you want to pick one for first team and the other for MVP, that's fine. I'm not going to judge you, but I'm just telling you, I'm not risking putting Jokic at forward, and then with the dumb way they count the total votes, all of a sudden he doesn't count, and he didn't have none, and all of a sudden he's on the second team because we didn't do this correctly. So if I think Jokic is better than Embiid this season, I'm voting for him first team, I'm voting Embiid second team, and that's how I'm doing it. How are you doing it? I really wish uh, I'd had a couple more years under my belt before I got... Yeah, you're rookie. You're young, I know. frisky. I know. Impressionable. So that, yeah, impressionable. <laughs> People lobbying you. <laughs> you're an easy target. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel so bad for anybody that lobbies me knowing there's a pretty good chance, even if it's a GM, where I'll be like, I, I doubt you've watched as many games as I have this year, so I don't, I don't fucking hear it. I, um, I Listen, I've tried to make it clear to multiple people, please don't lobby me. It makes me less likely to take your guy. It's just really insulting. Yeah, You know it what is. I mean? It's really insulting as if, like, fine, if you don't think I pay attention, and I don't mean that I understand the game better because the GMs have to watch their own teams play all the time. Um, yeah. I, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that if you if you reach out to a voter to be like, hey, you should do this, um, don't do that. It, you're basically telling that voter he's like too dumb to n- notice what's going on. So, yeah, think I don't know. of us. Think Russell and I are in a cockpit flying a plane. Don't knock on the door and peek your head in and go, hey, I was thinking maybe you should take a route, maybe go through Charlotte. <laughs> like, we don't want to hear from you. Let us fly the plane. <laughs> We're qualified to fly the plane. We care about this. We put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. We don't need your advice. I was going through it like, when you look at the historic first team stuff, it is straight up position. Now people can argue that it's dumb and that Jokic, is he really a center? Is he really a whatever? I mean, it's kind of like the old Tim Duncan thing. Tim Duncan was a center, but he wanted to be listed a power forward. So he was listed as power forward, even though they would like bring a center in every couple of years that barely played at the end of right. those games. Rashid so Mustarevich. Right, right. Like Fabricio Alberto. Like you go yeah. through all these Duncan years and you're like, look at all the minutes and then look at all the minutes of the supposed center where Duncan, I mean, the idea that the way Duncan set up on the floor if he was playing in today's game, they'd be like, oh, he's one of those old school centers, you know, right. <laughs> because of how he set up and they'd run that block action and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, you know, like with the Oscars, if, if I really like the guy from CODA, but I like somebody else, the best supporting actor. I wouldn't just be like, I'm going to put the Coda guy in best actor so he has a better chance to win. Like, we, you can't change categories. Jokic is not a forward. I'm just, I'm not doing it. Okay, now I'm, I'm deferring to you here on, on the history of this. Were there years where there were just three outstanding guards and one was kind of a perimeter, small forward shooting guard hybrid where, you know, that's probably the easiest one to kind of manipulate it a little bit? I know what it says on basketball reference. I know what it says with certain players of where they're aligned on ESPN.com. There's people that track the minutes part of it, but I'm always kind of like, are you tracking the minutes where they're actually on the floor? Or are you tracking like which game they start, which they're supposedly assigned some position? So were there years where they just said, ah, you know what, we're going to kind of bend this a little bit and put three, what we would see as guards, but all make first team. No, we don't. We didn't do it. Like, for instance, two. 2014, Durant, that was the year uh, Cleveland, I'm sorry, Miami lost to San Antonio in the finals, the rematch finals. The best two players that year were Kevin Durant and LeBron James. The third best player was probably Blake Griffin on the Clippers. That was his best season. He was really good. So LeBron and Durant, were our two All-NBA guys, first-team forwards. And Blake was the third forward. He finished third in the MVP voting. Just the way it works. You go back into the 90s and the 2000s over and over again, there was sometimes there were three guys for two spots. You go back to the 
two thousand early two thousands, especially when we had the Weber and Duncan and Dirk and um, Garnett, and it's just like got to pick two. So for us to say now, well, it's more positionless basketball, which I agree with, by the way, but they haven't changed the actual requirements. So we can't just kind of make it up for until they change the requirements. We have to go by how we're supposed to pick it, which is guard forward center and Jokic and Embiid are centers. And I think to just be like, oh, well, let's vote one of them for forward to get around this. That would, we haven't done that for 70 years. Why are we going to do it this year? People hate anything that's traditional now, though. So I think there's going to be. I get it. Yeah. I, I wonder, I think more people are going to disagree with you. I think the reaction to this would that's be like, fine. oh, that's stupid. Um, Here's what happens. If you do it that way, if you go say Jokic, because it feels like Jokic has more moment, momentum as the MVP, at least from what I've seen. Um, and I know ESPN had the straw poll up there too. So it felt like it was Jokic has more momentum than Embiid. So if it's Jokic, then it's Giannis. Well, Jokic is minus 240 on FanDuel now for MVP. Embiid's plus 230. Okay. Giannis so there you go. is plus 550. So yeah, he's a pretty decent favorite now. Okay, so if you went Jokic, Giannis, Tatum, Booker, Luka, is that your first team? Well, so this leads to the second conundrum. Because honestly, I'll just, I'll tell you that I did it this morning. If you go that route, it's actually not that hard to figure out the three teams. Well, that, that was a benefit. But my question is, is Durant a first team all NBA guy? Durant's better than Tatum. He's a better player. He's one of the best players in the league. He, right now, um, he has played, I think, 50... I got one, it. 50, 51 games, and then Tatum's played games. 73. Right. So he's four games left. He'll get to 55. Now, this is important. This is how much I care about this. This is why I don't need anyone's advice. I went through all the All-NBAs to see lowest games played... Huh, look at you. ...for somebody who made first team. Thank you for this. Bernard King, 1985, 55 games, first team all NBA forward. So we have planted our flag with that. We have Bill Walton, 58 games, 1978, first team all NBA center. And Shaq, 2006, 59 games, first team all NBA center. Now, COVID season. Why did Durant miss these games? He had that one injury where he missed, I think, 21 games because he got hurt. He had a legit injury. Yeah, the MCL, right? He also had the fucking, I was too close to somebody who had COVID and I can't play for three games. I think that happened to him twice. The other games that he missed were like bogus COVID error injuries. So normally my whole thing was like, I want you to play in two thirds of the games, which if he plays these last four, he's going to. So it's going to come down the wire. If it's 54, I don't think I'm going to vote for him first team or second team. But if he gets to 55, as dumb as this sounds, that's enough for me. And I, I, I want him to be a first team all NBA guy. He's one of the best guys in the league. And it's not his fault. He was hanging out next to, you know, Buddy or Bobby who had COVID and he didn't realize that he had to miss four games. This was a stupid year. We have to relax the games played at least a little bit, right? Across the board, because yeah. Tatum and Jokic uh, and DeRozan, they're the exceptions. I throw Trey Young in there as well. You know, yeah. Guys are going to land on like 75, 76 games by the time this thing is all said and done. Uh, I have no issue with any pro Durant argument. None. I mean, just I just to say it now. Anybody that wants to come with me to say, "Hey, do you want to hang out and talk about how awesome Durant is?" Yeah, absolutely. Pull up a chair. <laughs> yeah, Durant. I, like Durant's thirty-seven and six this year. Thirty points a game. Fifty-two, thirty-nine, ninety splits. Twenty-six per. Sixty-four percent true shooting. Only thirty-one point five usage. His, he's had, what, 30 guys on his team? Night to night, he has no idea who he's playing with. And he's one of the best players in the league. And if he's going to play 55 games, he has to be first team all NBA. So, and I said this as a Boston fan who would really enjoy it if Tatum got there, but it is what it is. Okay. I, I think well, it's so, a little ridiculous, though, when you go, like, if it's 54, he's second team, if he's 55, he's, sec like, he's first team. Um, but it's, it's a little bit like the all-star voting. I was just saying, I didn't want to make history with the vote, I guess oh. is my point. Like Bernard huh. at 55 to me is like the, that's, I have somebody I can point to. Well, Bernard made it at 55. So now I get to rent. Now that's, but that's without COVID that we know of. Oh, good point. So may, all right, fine. If he gets to 54, that's two thirds of the season. I can have him first team. He's better than Jason Tatum. I love Jason Tatum, but he's better. I am okay with the voting process, having just a little bit of what is your standing in the game? Not like what's your career resume. But right now, if we're talking about you can't get to five players in the league without saying Durant's name, 
it just sort of sucks for Tatum in this amazing turnaround and the chance that they're still, what, they're two games out of the number one seed well, in the Miami ca- team. Yeah, caveat, if they get a one seed, I think you have to rethink Tatum and first team OMBA. Because one seed's Katie- like a legit thing. <laughs> What if KD plays 53 games and the Celtics finish a game out of first? <laughs> now, now, my, now my brain's going to break. Now listen, Tatum's been awesome. And I think him making second team all NBA and probably getting either fifth or sixth in the MVP is a huge thing for him. Right? That's he, He's already a winner. So, I don't know. I just think you and I both think Giannis is 1A and Durant's 1B or Durant's 1A and Giannis is 1B. Whatever it is. You're just talking about guys you'd want for a playoff series or playoff game, those are the two guys. And to not have him on first team on NBA because his buddy who was visiting him in Brooklyn or whoever, however, he was had close proximity for the three games he needed to make it a lot more logical to bet him first team. By the way, I was looking through, you'll love this. Before We'll, we'll get to teams one second, but you'll love this. Least amount of games somebody made first, uh, first or second team on NBA. Gus Johnson, 1966. 41 games. 41 games. No, he's a forward. 41 games made it. Now, they had less games back then, but uh, then we had Pippen in 1998, 44 games, 13 all NBA, the, the last year, the last dance year. He got voted in 13 all NBA forward. But the other thing that you're doing, which, which I know you're doing, is that it isn't just the number of games. It's also, okay, but who were you going up against? And there's weird years where you'll look through it. Like, I felt like the league didn't have a bunch of two guards for a long time. Yep. You're like, do you see the drop off after like the top four two guards? You're like, wow, that's a bad group. And right now with centers, the forwards. Centers in the 2000s. was Centers a had a brutal stretch. But like when you look at the forwards, there's a handful of them that are the single best players in the game. And then it gets it gets real light. Like there's all a, of a sudden it's Pascal Siakam. Who? You're like, Whoa. But see, the forward thing, because that, I, I don't know. I mean, are we doing the rest of the teams now? Yeah, do it. You. you go. Why don't you give yours and I'll give mine? I had Jokic, Giannis, Tatum, Booker, Luka. Mm. With, with obviously the caveat that I could change my mind because of how much we're, I was This is our snapshot with four games to go. Right. So we had the same. I have Durant in the Tatum spot. Then I had Embiid, DeRozan, Durant, Steph, and Ja. Steph still played 64 games. All right, um, yeah, I'm glad you're sitting down. I have Trey over Curry. Okay. Floor's yours. I, <laughs> the stats are insane. I looked at it pretty carefully. He's going to end up playing 12 more games. Steph's at 64. Trey's going to end up like 76. Trey's averaging 28, 10, and 4. 20 points a game. His splits, 46%, 38% three, 90% free throw, 25.5 PR. And he's going to end up at like 76, 77 games. Curry is 26, 5, and 6, 44%, 38% three, 21.5% PR. If you're going advanced metrics, Trey Trey beats him in every respect. If you go eye test what you mean to a team, leadership, better record, it's Steph. But I watched this. I think Trey's kept this Atlanta team afloat. That team's a mess. Like that, that they lost John Collins for the year. Guys in and out. Cam Reddish is out. Um, oh, Cam Reddish is out. You're well, already at the Cam Reddish just, part of the I'm argument. Just like they, we went into the season thinking, oh man, this is this deep, athletic, awesome team, and it's like one thing after another went terrible. The only guy that's been good for them is Trey. Who else is who else has been reliable? In that his numbers are team? incredible. No, I mean, there's all sorts of guys that go through these massive shooting slumps for them. Uh, up until what a week and uh, ten days ago, they were they've won five in a row. So now they're over five hundred. They were thirty six and thirty seven. I tweeted out something being like they're the most confident thirty six and thirty seven team I've ever seen. They're the <laughs> most dis- they're the most disappointing team in the East. Bill, I get it. I don't think any of it's Trey's fault though. I think it's a weirdly constructed team that was a little too big for its britches last year. But from what I've seen, especially down the stretch, it seems like he's trying to play them into some sort of momentum as we head through the thing there. The They've had a nice right stretch. Now. They've had a nice stretch for a couple, you They're know, two like behind Cleveland. Like yeah. I'm just uh, saying I have by a hair right now, Trey, but, okay, I but if you apply, mind. if you apply your KD rule to this, there's no way you would have Trey over Steph. I guess my question is, did Steph have that good of a year? By his standards? No, it was like what the seventh best year of his career. 
His team hasn't yeah, even won that's, 50. That's not the game. His it's, team hasn't even won 50 games yet. It's not like if, if you're telling me this is a two seed, 60 wins, his stats are a little off, but look what he means. I'm in. But it, now you're telling me, man, there might be a four seed and he's having the seventh best year of his career. I don't know. Trey's crushes him head to head from stats. He's just better. Yeah, I went with the guys that I just think are better players to winning teams. And I might, I might and, ver- revert back to that in a week. And Trey just gets you where my head's at. The smart teams go at Trey. I mean, it's like from the jump. Yeah, and Atlanta has to figure out it's how fair. to like hide him sometimes defensively. And I know I'm going to hear about like, oh, well, Steph isn't that good on defense. Steph, it's it's totally different. I'm I'm just telling you, it's it's different. Um, I just wish Steph had played better before he got hurt. That like once. Well, he had that two month stretch where it looked like he was the MVP. I mean, right. honestly, we've changed we've changed who the MVP is like every two weeks this season. Um, yeah, that's true. And then I think once people started defending him, he was forcing it. And then he got weird when he was changing or chasing the record. He started forcing it too. And then there was this really long stretch where he just wasn't shooting it well by his standards. Now you could look at his overall numbers and go, hey, wait, if you actually look at it, like this is pretty good. And you're like, yeah, but that's not, that's the point is like whenever we look at the greats in the game, we go, this is not the season you expect from the greatest shooter that we've ever seen. And yeah, he's, he's had bad stretches, but they've, they've collectively been a mess. The defense held up for a little while after Draymond was out and then it fell off the face of the earth. So I get your point, but I still think Atlanta's actually because I had high hopes for them because of all the things you talked about. I also think Atlanta's kind of sneaky, uh, a team to pay attention to this offseason of just going, hey, can we throw a bunch of these pieces of the team and just add a guy, the next yeah, guy that's Yeah, they're mad. three for one, three yeah, for one with totally. some picks. Right. When it happened. And look, Atlanta might end up at 45 and 37, something like that. And they might end up passing Cleveland and getting a seven. And so I don't know. I think it's tight. I just didn't love the way Steph, I didn't love his second half of whatever those 64 games were. I just didn't feel like he was awesome in those games. So, but you're right. Legacy standpoint, um, that does matter with this stuff. So who'd you have for 13? This is where it gets a little tricky because of the forward part of it. Um, as much as I love Bam, he just hadn't played enough games and I kind of look at yeah. Cat. Cat's not perfect, but that they figured this thing out in Minnesota. You know, and it's something you hope to build on. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. And somebody who was, I think, just a mess defensively, you know, his help was was bad or he didn't know what he was doing. Like, it's it's all, he's competitive with it at least now. And, I mean, he shoots the hell out of the ball. So, I think if we're going just straight center, then it's Cat. I have them too. Then it's LeBron and Trey, who are my certainties for third team. Mm. I'd love to find a way to do Chris Paul. In that final spot, I'm not sure. Donovan Mitchell is still on the list. And that last forward thing after LeBron, that's where there feels like there's this forward gap where I go, I'm not sure what to do with that final. That's like the one, those, like, that's the biggest question mark that I have for the all NBA teams going to the third team. I have CP3 and Courier Trey, whoever I end up not putting on second team as the guards. Mitchell is just, Occasionally, of the fact that we can only vote for six guards. I think I wish there was a way to ha- give him one of those other spots, but the voting doesn't work that way. And you're right. It's like Levine or Siakam. Now, the LeBron thing is a really tough one. I mean, he's played 56 games. <laughs> They're 25 and 31 when he plays. The team is at one of the all time train wreck dumpster fires. It's one of the most disappointing NBA teams in NBA history. And I, I don't know why we have to be in a rush to throw him on one of the three All-NBA teams. They have the eighth worst record in the league. I am on record on this podcast in my column over and over again, not wanting to vote guys on losing teams on one of the All-NBA teams. I think the winning part should matter at least a little bit. And if he's going to play 58 games and they're going to have the eighth or seventh worst record in the league, why do I have to reward him? That's the part I don't get. Like, I get it. Now, if you're going to say legacy stuff, it would be stupid not to have him on. Like, he made it in 2019, which is, he made third team, and it was like a total legacy pick. He didn't deserve to be on the team. He, they didn't make the playoffs. He played like 55 games. So, basically, if we're going to give it to him this year, we're just saying LeBron is on the team. Every year that he plays at least 55 games, he has to be on because he's LeBron James. I'm not sure the voting works that way. 
19, you have an argument. I don't think you have an argument this year. You can't make the Durant argument that you just did for first team with those qualifiers. And then, like, we're out of forwards. Siakam has tore it up uh, the last, like, you look at his March numbers. They're incredible. I guess I always have a little bit of a problem because I feel like if he gets somebody who's really good defensively, it's like, oh, all right. Um, Jimmy Butler's missed too many games, even though his numbers are always what really about solid. about Levine is eligible at forward? And he, I mean, he is a forward. I mean, LeBron's going to win the scoring title and you're not going to put him on third team? He's going to play 56 games and they're <laughs> going to be one of the eight worst teams in the league? He'll be like, they congratulations, suck. here's your no third doubt. team on NBA? They're, they're, they have a worse record since March 1st than like three teams that are tanking. Did you think but, he was fun? Did you think he was fun to play with? Do you think he made his teammates better? I don't think anyone had fun this year with that team. I think he started looking for points because we know he's chasing something here. I think he, you know it. I mean, it'll be on the next edition of the LeBron sneakers, you know, scoring title at age 37, all that stuff. Um, he was going for it. That's fine. I, I just, I'm kind of at a point where I, I can't make a really good argument for the other forwards that I'm on the fence about to put over him. So that's the better thing. It's like, are you just shoehorning in? So if LeBron doesn't make it, it's probably Levine and Siakam as the two forwards. And that's just like, Levine, I, I think I would, I'd feel better about than Siakam because Siakam, like Waz and House and I did a thing like two and a half months ago where we did the worst contracts and we had Siakam on there. Like it, his resurgence has really been 2022 where he's turned, but like the game today, like he's been really good. I think he's been one of the been best awesome. 25 guys in the league. Yeah, it's tough because, so last year I didn't vote for Bradley Beal because his team was losing and I thought he was going for his own stats. And I was like, I, I just, those stats don't mean that much to me when your team couldn't even make the playoffs. So I'm not voting for you. He made it anyway. He made 13, but it's like, I'd already kind of planted my flag on the, I don't care about your stats if your team can't even make the playoffs. You have a lot of flags. That's one of my flags. So now it's like, well, LeBron, he's putting up stats on a non-playoff team, but so I got to change the rules there. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to land on that one. Okay, but that's back to one of the points I just made is that you can have these rules but you will contradict your own rules depending on the field. So right. that could be your Beal rule, but you may have had six better options at that position, which you likely did. That's I'm a fair point. I'm saying with your LeBron rule, I don't know that you have six better options. Like my guards, I got it. I got Book, Booker, yeah. Luca. Mitchell, I got, Mitchell would be an awesome option. if I, Right. I got Steph Jaw and then Trey. So my five guards are good. Like I, I don't know how I would argue. Like you, we talk about slotting Trey yeah. over, over Steph, which I... You know, I think there probably a lot of people that would agree with you on that one. I'm the wrong guy to argue that with, but Trey's on it. Trey's on it. Uh, Wait a second. You know, I love Steph. Steph's Steph's one of my all time. No, I know that. I know. I that. just don't know. I I just don't know if. Hey, look, I, I can't. I, I can't win a stats argument. I can't with with Steph. But I don't love the stats argument only because your defense piece with Trey, I think, matters and should factor into whether he gets second team or third team. But. You know, if they run the slate and they finish the season with on like a nine or ten game winning streak, whatever it would end up being, and Trey's playing the way he's playing, I, 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 that would give me pause. <laughs> 